I ripped down four pieces, two inches wide. Okay, both edges have been on the joiner. Now I'm gonna send it through the planer and I'm gonna thin these out a little, a little too thick because this is what it's gonna go in like so. The overhang is just not enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plane these down so I get a little bit more of an overhang. So I'm gonna do all four so we get that set up. I decided to uh, plane all these four pieces down to around a half inch. Um, I want it to match the side about the same thickness here. And the other thing is when I put it in here, the border, I'm gonna butt it up against here like so. Now I'm gonna have an ingrain showing here along with this ingrain and same with the other side. What I did was take it off and then clamp it to the side of my table. Now I'm gonna use the jigsaw to cut out that pattern I just drew. I sat down and uh, designed this pattern for the sides for uh, going around the chessboard. And you notice I um, put a piece next to it for the next one. So I clamped them together and then I drew the line and followed that. Now I'm going to sit, make the second one to match the first one and so on and so forth. Okay, what I did was I clamped these two together and then I shaped them both identical by using the 120. Now I'm going to change this to uh, uh, probably a 400 and then I'm going to finish this off. This will give me the two side legs. The other two sides, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for design yet, but that's how we got this. So they're both identical. Okay, I'm finished up with the 400 here. I polished it all up. Now if you look, I'll just finish this off on the sides with a hand, by hand. Alright, now I'm going to create the other two sides with a different design. Probably, I'm not sure yet, but uh, that completes uh, two sides at least. Here's how you get the same pattern designed here as you would on this side. Uh, put down a piece of paper, whatever, draw your line across halfway. Then you want to flip it over and see if it matches. Okay, if it doesn't, mark on wherever that you need to take more off. Then you take it over the drill press on the drum sanding part and then you sand it and just keep going back and forth with this till you get these the same. That's how you're going to get both sides looking uh, like each other, okay? Now, I decided to go ahead and make all four legs like this. And so I'll design that and then we'll uh, get going from there. Clamps are now removed. Okay, um, I went around and pulled up on all these sides to make sure that it was glued real good, and it is. Uh, my legs are all done. They're ready to go. But the next step is, we're going to, um, I already marked it, but I marked the middle of, uh, if you see the lines here, I marked the middle of each side. So when I go to put the legs on, I want to make sure the middle of this is on that line. We don't want it down here. So, because we're going to cut off both ends. Okay, so that's set. Now what I did, is I took a sharp chisel and I ran it across this edge and this one I went all the way around removing excess glue because you're going to put this in there you don't want it to hit. Okay from that point I am going to go ahead and put on, you see the end grains running this way, the grains running this way. So I'm going to do these first. I'm going to go ahead and cut them to the, the width of this because when I'm done, I want these to overhang like so when I cut them off so the end grain will show on this end grain. All right, the piece has been cut to length now and I made sure that I made sure all these corners and everything were flat so I did a little bit of surfacing there. Now what I did is I drilled a couple of quarter inch holes in this end and in this end. What I'm going to do is join them together with screws. But what I'm going to do is fit it first before I even uh, attempt to uh, glue it and screw it. So we're going to put it like so. All right. Then what you're going to do is you want to line it up to where just got a little bit, barely got a little bit of hangover on each side. Feel the back. If everything looks good, then you're going to want to clamp it. Always use them. 
wood on there so you don't damage the other the good wood. Alright, so you just you know, barely run it up. Now you adjust it. Okay, it's a little loose, I'll try a little more. There, see, it's still moved, but it's uh, maybe a little more. Okay, now check. My overhang is probably a little too much here, so I'll just tap it a little bit. Make sure this is down. Check this side. Okay, make sure this is flat. You want it level all the way across. You want it overhang. Okay, now I don't have an overhang, so. Okay, just a little bit. I, I, I kind of just barely got an overhang. Okay, back looks good. Okay, now you push down and so. Make sure you push down it and then go ahead and tighten it just a little more. All right, now you're going to look. Do I have a space in here? Do I have a space in here? Nope, that looks good. It's all the way down. We're all set there, so I'm going to do this to the other side. Then I'm going to go ahead and drill my pilot hole through into this piece. Okay, now I'm going to drill out my last pilot hole here. Okay. Now that goes all the way into here. we got to make sure that this is the right size so it doesn't split this, but it locks onto it. From there, I got the bit already set up for drilling um, just into the first half inch piece. I don't want to go into this piece at all. I do not want this screw to lock onto this. I want it to lock onto this. So we're just going to go in a little bit on this. It'll draw it in, so you've got to be careful. That's about all you need. Okay, and I'm going to do all four sides on that. Okay, before you do any gluing, you want to set it up this way. Now, what I did is I clamped this down so it pushes this down to here. Same with this side. That holds both sides down. Okay, then put a clamp across so it crimps these corners together. Now, you go ahead and put these pretty snug, but this just barely, just enough to hold it where it, it uh, has no gap here. You do the same to the other side. Now that it's set, that's when you run your screws in and run them back out, which I already did. From there, you want to take it apart, put glue in all four corners, put it back together just like this. Then go ahead and run your four number four screws. They're about an inch long, number four screws. Go ahead and run them in. Now you got your glue in there, your screws or your clamps now. From that point, we're going to go over and uh, drill out some quarter inch plugs. I'll show you how to do that. This is called a plug cutter. This is a quarter inch. So it'll drill me a plug a quarter inch. So what we do, first thing we do is go ahead and uh, put it up in the drill press and we tighten her down. Now, this is a piece of maple. This is the top and bottom of the maple. Okay, so these, are, these are the sides. So you want to drill on the top or the bottom. All right, now, try to keep it about a half inch in thickness. Any thicker and this starts burning. So around a half inch, this way it worked pretty good. Okay, now you want to drill into this wood just a little bit so you get a smooth edge on both sides. a little bit. Any thicker than this, it is, it's just going to burn it really good. Now that's going to be kind of hot, so what you want to do is let it cool a second. Then you can pull this plug out of here. And this is the plug that I used over there on the chest board. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can get this out of there. Now we got ourselves a quarter inch plug. Now from here, we're going to go back to the chest board and I'll show you how I put that in. Okay, this glue is still drying in here, which is fine. Leave it clamped. Now, what you want to do is take a put a little glue inside the hole a little bit, a little bit on here. All right. Then you take a um, now some you probably gonna have to do this in a lot of them because they're so short. Use a needle nose pliers. Okay, you got your glue. Set it on there, and then you tap it in until it stops. Now these have been done already. They're drying. But leave them stick out. You want them to stick out a little bit. Don't have them flat. Because uh, when we go to sand this, this will become perfectly smooth with this. So let, make sure they stick out a little bit. 
Now you can buy quarter inch dowels that are 36 inches long, but I couldn't find them in Mabel. So that's why I went over to the drill press and cut my own out. Now these are Mabel plugs. So we're going to let this sit for 24 hours. That'll set this up. It sets this up. Now remember, this side will turn on you. So be careful. Make sure you adjust it that it's the same all the way across here before you set all your clamps up and they're all set. Tighten them down, but make sure this is level, then let it sit. It's been 24 hours, so it's time to take off our clamps. Okay, we've got the clamps off. Our next step is to take the frame itself off here. We're going to take it over to the bench sander and we're going to sand this on a, a 220, just so we can get these plugs down level with this. Okay, it's time to sand the plugs here, so we're going to... Okay, now that we got the, the plug sanded down real good, I switched the paper back to 120 because we're going to be sanding this in grain and it's going to take a lot more to sand it. So. From here I'm going to switch this to a uh, 320 and I'm going to go around the whole thing with a 320. Okay, I already used a 220 on it, you didn't see that, but I just now switched it to a 320. So this will be the final sand on this. You want to keep going over all four sides until you get all the scratches out or at least 99% of them. Okay, uh, main thing is here. Make sure you're getting all the scratches out of there the best you can with the 320. Okay, at this point, check it. Looks good. Next step, we're going to go around this inside border. We already did a 220, so let's go a 320, sand a 320, and then go to a 420, or a 400, probably a 400, so 320 and a 400. So let's get this shined up like this looks. Now, next step is, well, you notice we got this to 400. It should be pretty shiny with a 400. From that point, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to belt sand the top of this to get this all smooth and looking good. Okay, I'll be taking the back of this down with a 120, and then I'm going to go to a 180. Okay, I already completed the 120 and already went over the 180. Remember, belt sanding can be real hard. Uh, be careful. This is a pretty soft wood, so it's going to dig in real easy. 
Okay, so this is a 180. I'm probably going to do a 400 on it just to make it smoother, even though it's the underside. I still want it to look good. Okay, I got it set up for a 400. Here. Remember, in a, a finished sander, you can go in any direction with it, but I usually at the end finish it off just by going with the grain. But look at this, there, that surface is gorgeous. So we're all set there. Okay, our next step is to take it over the bench sander, and I'm going to put a 120 on it. Uh, don't use an 80, it's just too aggressive, but a 120, and I'm just going to do the end grain on both sides only with a 120 because like I said, ingrain is real hard. So I'm gonna start with a 120 and then the grain. Then I'll probably go to a 220. Then I'll go ahead and do all of it with a 220 and a 320. All right, I'm set up with my 120. And I'm just gonna sand the ingrains only. Looking good, looking good. So I'm going to put a 220 on it, and of course a 320. I'm going to go around with all of it. All right, looks like we got it pretty well done here. These inside edges and the outside edges are last challenge is to get this smooth. Okay, this is going to take the longest, getting this smooth and uh, scratch free. So I'm going to start with an 80 grit. All right, now I'm going to go with the grain for a bit, then I got to reverse it and go against the grain. Now that's going to scratch it all the heck. Then I go back again and kind of take out the scratches, going back and forth, just keep working on it. When it gets pretty smooth, then you switch to 120, do the same thing until you get it pretty smooth and then switch to a 180. They have a 180 for this. And then uh, do the same thing. The very final thing is always go with the grain. Okay, now this is gonna be challenging. Take some time. Uh, like I said, I do not have a drum sander. Otherwise you can send it through in a couple minutes, but this is a challenge and I don't mind it. So take your time. It could take you hours to do this. Okay, I took the belt sander with an 80, and then I used a 120 on it, and then I used a 180. Okay, for this point, I'm gonna use a 220 with a finishing sander, and uh, see, this should work pretty good because it's pretty smooth right now, so let's see how this goes. Okay, I've been working on this for about a half hour or so. Um, I got the 320 on it. Now, a uh, key point here is since I went from a 180 to a 320. I'm going to have to sand a lot longer. Uh, the belt sander, I don't have anything other than 180. So that's okay. You might not have it either. So I've taken a finishing sander and with a 320 and just keep going over it and over it until you get it real shiny. Now, here's kind of a tip. Use it like you would if you're polishing a car. <laughs> Okay, keep it, make sure you go about up to here at least. Don't go like this because it falls over. So I notice if you go at an angle, it stays better. So kind of keep, when you go over or hang, hang it at an angle. So just keep doing it till you get a shine out of this, okay? I've gone as far as I can with the 320. Now I put on a 400. A uh, couple of helpful tips is if you use a sanding block, you're gonna wanna go direction with the grain only, but don't just stay here. Just slowly work your way across. You want equal sand through the whole thing and then start over again. Keep doing it this way. This can go any direction and I do the same thing. I'll just go across 
until I get the whole thing, then I start over again, okay? So let's keep working on this until we get ourselves a shine out of this. And then from that point, I think we're done sanding. Okay, went over the entire thing. I uh, used the uh, uh, 320 to round the edges here. If you notice, these are rounded off. And I ran it real gently across the edges here. Then I went back over it with a 400. Okay, now that's fine tuning it. Then I also did this. This piece is done now too. I went over and did all the edges with this. Then took the 400. And uh, make sure you polish it up afterwards. Go over the whole thing. Check it out. Make sure you got all the scratches out. It's looking good. Our next step is we're going to have to lightly wet everything. Let it dry. Then we got to go over the whole entire surface again with a 400. Okay, remember I lightly wet all the wood and I already sanded it to a 400. So the next step is to glue the top to the legs. So what we're going to do, we're going to be uh, Sparingly, we want to put extra glue on this because we want to make sure that it's going to stay, let it drip down. You probably won't even need a brush on this. Okay, here I'm just going to flip it over and set it in. All right. Push down, make sure it looks good. Okay, now we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna put, put this here. So it doesn't scratch what I just sanded. Okay, now we're gonna take a damp rag. We're gonna go around and get all the extra glue off. And from that point, we're gonna let it sit overnight. Okay, be sure you clamp all four corners. After you got the glue on there, you want to just clamp it down. Okay, now we got all the clamps on. All right, well, I wiped all the glue around the outer edges. Make sure you get all the glue off. Okay, we're going to let it sit overnight and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, it's been 24 hours. So, what we're going to do is remove the clamps and I'm going to resand the entire uh, chessboard with 400 again just to make sure I got everything right on the money so let's remove the clamps first all right got the clamps off let's turn it over all right looking good so I'm gonna run a 400 over the entire board again. Okay, now it's all been resanded with a 400. I blew it off the air compressor, wipe it down real clean. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put uh, tongue oil on this. Okay, we're going to rub it in like we do a wax. I'm doing the bottom first uh, because I don't want the top. You know, if it's sitting down with the top done, then it you know tends to pick up particles and stuff. So. All right, so we're just going to rub the whole thing down with tongue oil. Okay, we've got it all covered and ready to go here. So give this about 10, 12 hours to dry. Then take a, a 3 aught steel wool and uh, buff it up a little bit all over and then do another coat. Okay, it's been over 12 hours. It's time to prepare it for the second coat of tongue oil. Uh, I'm going to use a 4 aught steel wool, meaning it's fine steel wool. Okay, I'm wearing a mask because this stuff does come off and fly around, so wear a mask using this. I use a block, just barely go with the grain. You just want to get it back to smooth again. Do the whole thing like this, just lightly. You don't have to push hard. Okay, I went over the whole entire board, the top, sides, bottom, 
Now it's time to blow it down with some air. Make sure you get Okay, it's all blown down and ready for the second coat. All right, make sure you put it on, swirl it around. I got to try to get a lint-free rag, but that's kind of hard. But. All right, that ends this uh, builder series of building a chessboard. So let this sit for about 14 hours or so. This ends the builder series building a chessboard. I hope this is educational for you. Please check us out on uh, Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description box below. If you like the video, please thumbs it up and share it. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.